Thank you, Mr. Chair. Let me continue on the subject of uh, productivity for the construction industry. At 36 billion, the construction industry accounts for 5% of GDP. It comprises about 12,500 firms and employs 320,000 workers. However, 5% of the large firms contribute half the total value add of the industry. The remaining are many small and medium firms, so there's a great disparity between in productivity between large and small firms. The construction industry is characterized by the practice of multi-layer subcontracting. Externally, building contractors also have to interface with developers, prefabricators, architectural and engineering firms. The many interfaces often add to the complexity of project design and implementation. To raise the industry's productivity, we need to address these inefficiencies. We conceived the first construction productivity roadmap in 2010. The roadmap adopts a 3M framework, manpower, machines, and methods to raise productivity. The first M is on manpower. Construction is a manpower-intensive industry, but it need not remain so. International best practices elsewhere show that when workers are skilled or multi-skilled, construction projects require for typically require few workers and resulting quality is also higher. To create a conducive environment for skill upgrading, MOM has progressively tightened MYE or man year entitlement allocated to projects. MOM has also raised foreign workers' levies. As a result, we see more firms willing to invest in technology and workforce development. To enhance the skill level of our workforce, BCA is helping to expand the industry's training capacity. Between 2010 and 2014, BCA has set aside funding to help the industry to upgrade more than 74,000 in-service personnel from 6,000 firms. The second M is about machine or mechanization. Between 2010 and 2014, about 880 firms received funding from mechanization credit scheme. The use of the right tools in mechanization, automation and information technology has helped firms to raise workers' productivity. In addition, some 135 of these firms also receive investments allowance, a tax credit for purchasing productive machineries. The third M is about method of construction. In this area, we are helping the industry to acquire the latest know-how for adoption in our own environment. In the COS debate, a number of members have spoken of the need for industry-specific productivity indicators. Indeed, site productivity has been improving at 1.4% per annum since 2010. This is encouraging, but we can certainly do more. In our second roadmap, beyond the 3M framework I spoke about earlier, we have added two more important thrusts. The first thrust is the adoption of a design for manufacturing and assembly or DFMA. Simply put, DFMA requires the industry to manufacture as many building parts as possible in a factory. Prefabricated parts are then assembled on site. To embrace DFMA well, our firms need new capabilities in design, engineering and manufacturing. To reduce the inefficiency associated with multi-layer subcontracting, we will also look for ways to integrate and improve communications amongst all parties in the value chain. BCA introduced building information modelling in 2012. Since then, more than 80% of the larger consultancy firms and 60% of larger contractors have adopted BIM. The adoption of BIM has standardised the digital communications amongst all parties in the value chain. BCA will push BIM usage to all players ultimately. To encourage concurrent engineering, the public sector will also push on with the early contractor involvement scheme. This approach enables the project owner and his consultants and contractor to undertake the project <clears throat> as an integrated team, resolving many construction details at the early stage, which can save months from the overall project schedule. The second thrust is to develop deep capabilities in the industry that uh, Engineer Lee talks about. It is important that our progressive firms benchmark themselves against the international best practices. We will find ways to help them to move up the value chain by acquiring R&D, engineering and design capabilities. 
To support these initiatives that I've just mapped out, we will set aside another 450 million for the Construction Productivity and Capability Fund under the second roadmap for the next three years. Thank you.